Nostalgia is a powerful currency. In the age of retro remakes and throwbacks, it pays to be in the business of bygones. But regardless of whether it's a quick buck to make or a labor of love passion project, nostalgia is a tricky beast to tame. The memories of our childhood favorites are rose tinted, and the same imagination that transported us beyond our living rooms causes us to misremember what the experience was actually like. So in order to get nostalgia right, modern games need to look and play much better than the original titles that inspired them. And Octopath Traveler is one that gets it right. While Octopath is obviously inspired by the Golden Age JRPGs of the early 90s, it is an evolution of the formula. Combat is still turn-based, but adds depth with some modern touches, such as a break meter like that used in Final Fantasy XIII. The art style is mostly pixel bit, but employs some fancy effects through the Unreal Engine 4, adding depth of field, advanced lighting, and photorealistic water. And the music is the complete orchestral realization of what could only be imagined in the 16-bit era. Octopath's composer Yasunori Nishiki stated that he wanted to create a soundtrack that would bring back feelings from our childhood frozen deep inside us. At the same time, I didn't want to just recreate the past, so I applied a great deal of heated passion to defrost these feelings. Nishiki recognizes the nostalgic power that music in particular has over other mediums, thanks to how it interacts with our minds. Music activates neural pathways all over the brain, not only in the auditory cortices to process pitch and the cerebellum for rhythm and timing, but also in the amygdala, the brain's emotional center, and the hippocampus, the area responsible for long-term memory. Having a direct line to the neural centers involved in memories and emotions means that music is a particularly potent ingredient when waxing nostalgic about the video games of your childhood. It's why hearing wind scene from Chrono Trigger still sends shivers up your spine 20 years later. Yeah, just like that. But then, what is it about Octopath's soundtrack that makes it reminiscent of the Golden Age JRPG soundtracks? After all, its crisp orchestral recordings sound considerably different to the lo-fi electronic chip tunes of the past. Well, first of all, even on the Super Nintendo, RPG music has always aspired for the orchestra. Game composers often doubled as sound engineers back in the day, handcrafting waveforms to imitate the timbres of real orchestral instruments. And their compositions were inspired by the classical composers. Uematsu cites Tchaikovsky as an influence, Yoko Shimomura does Beethoven, and Yasunori Mitsuda, Ravel, and Bach, just to name a few. Part of the reverence of these old game soundtracks is how they managed to transcend the technical limitations of the console they were made for, and be imagined far greater than the sum of their sounds. But it's these same technical limitations that differentiated game music from its classical inspirations. Despite all the waveform handling, the console's sound chips were ultimately only ever able to make primitive electronic pulse noises. On top of that, they could only produce a small number of these sounds at once, which had to be shared between the music and the sound effects too, so it could never be on the same scale as a complete orchestra. And due to player interaction, compositions had to seamlessly and infinitely loop without the melody getting annoying. All of this resulted in pieces that were built around the melody as its core focus. It could be played by a single instrument, it needed to be interesting and expressive of its subject, and yet subtle enough to not get on your nerves with continuous listening. This is why old game tunes are so flippin' catchy, and how so many of the soundtracks from that era have stood the test of time. They have meticulously crafted melodies that were literally made to be listened to over and over again, allowing them to embed themselves into our minds and memories. So if the Golden Age JRPG composers look to classical music to elevate their own work, 
For a modern orchestral piece to sound like video game music, it needs to employ the unique compositional techniques of the genre, which were all rooted in its limitation. And this is exactly what Yasunori Nishiki has done for Octopath Traveler. To get into the mindset of creating strong, memorable tunes, he would initially approach pieces only thinking about its main melody and the chord progression. The actual arrangement of the piece wasn't even considered until there was a solid song in its most simple form. I recently noticed that this approach was echoed by Noriyasu Agamatsu when he was writing his also orchestral throwback soundtrack for Final Fantasy Brave XVS. He said he'd primarily focus on getting the melody and bass parts right first, before moving on to the full arrangement. Nishiki also embraced simplicity by paring down the number of simultaneous instruments in the score as much as possible, afraid that a large orchestra would run the risk of blurring the main melody. Most tracks just feature a soloist or two, and have some light percussion and basic accompaniment in order for the melody to take center stage. In this way, it's more similar to a pop song than it is to a symphony. This is even true of most of the battle and boss tracks, which keep the ensemble small, but up the intensity with a higher tempo and, of course, a touch of rock. In an interview with Famitsu, Nishiki said that he thought a full-bodied orchestra leaves no space for the imagination to work, something integral to the magic of those old games. The small arrangement sizes means that the choice of which instruments to include is crucial. Octopath's melodies are quite often carried by violins due to their higher pitch, which are able to separate themselves from the orchestral pack and sit comfortably on top. Even in the more tender field and character themes, the solo instruments chosen are typically those with a higher range. Healer extraordinaire Ophelia has a flute. The thief Therion has an oboe. And the best boy Alfin has a smooth alto saxophone. Using the higher register instruments also creates a sense of familiarity in the music, resembling the high-pitched synth whistles produced by the old consoles. Maybe it's just me, but those high-pitched frequencies just feel really comfy in my ears. All of this makes for hummable tunes that stick in your head long after you've put the console down. And to ensure that these themes are given every opportunity to be heard, Nishiki even structures his songs to draw attention to the melody. Tracks usually dive straight into the main motif of the piece, with little to no introduction, and he tried to repeat that motif as much as possible. This is best heard in perhaps the most memorable tune in the entire game, the main theme. After just two bars of introduction, the main motif is presented very simply with a flute. This is then repeated with some horns added to the mix and a slightly elevated finish. The piece then briefly transitions into a second motif, which was initially written to be the main motif, but was deemed to be a bit too somber. It's cool that he still got to incorporate it though. This is then followed by a regal third motif on a trumpet, which is actually a variation of the Victory Fanfare. Thank you. 
At this point, the piece returns to the main motif, already giving the tune a sense of familiarity, even on the first listen. And from here on in, it just repeats that phrase over and over, four times. The melody carried high above the orchestra by the flute and violins, and building into a beautiful crescendo. The main theme is a perfect representation of Octopath Traveler, because every aspect of it was built from a love of its inspirations. By adhering to the same technical limitations as the classics, Yasunori Nishiki was able to tap into the same mindset and bring the orchestral life that the melodies deserve. It's the same game music that we've always loved, but reimagined for today. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I am adoring Octopath Traveler, and I think the soundtrack is legitimately already on my all-time favorites list. The only thing I love more are my incredible patrons, whose generous support continues to make this show possible. If GameScore Fanfare means something to you, and you're able and willing, your help would mean the absolute world to me. It goes a really long way.